Hey, I'm Nate Flax. I'm Noah Long with McGuire. And this is Talking Lion. Talking Lion is a podcast focused on artist-to-artist conversation. We're primarily artists, a duo called Sleeping Lion, but we've been lucky enough to write, produce, and hang out with so many incredible rising artists since we started our project. Whether it's at sessions or parties over cups of coffee, we've talked with our creative friends about everything. Music, life, love, and all the subtle complexities that come with being in the middle of a journey. Talking Lion is about hitting record in these conversations and sharing them with you. There's no real structure, nothing really prepared, just friends talking about life and what it's been like and where it's going. We now have a Patreon for fans of our show to help keep this going. Subscribers will become a part of the show in various ways, from providing questions to our guests, to getting a shout out on the show, to actually being on the show to chat with us. We'll even send you a mug. So check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash talking lion. We recorded this episode with our longtime friend, Ariza. We first met Ariza while we were all at Berkeley College of Music. He was actually the first one to discover who we were after we anonymously started our project. We later reconnected in Los Angeles. Some context for this interview. We recorded this remotely over FaceTime. Last year, Ariza had worked with Ian Kirkpatrick on Dua Lipa's song, Pretty Please, and he recently started a duo project with Me at Hope called The Natural Synthetic, which debuted with their single, Nervous. A prolific artist and producer, Ariza has worked harder and smarter than most to cultivate his distinct sound and collaborate with the best of the best. So, without further ado, I'm Ariza, and this is Talking Lion. Well, hey, hello, what's hello. up? <laughs> good to see you, bud. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm like feeling good having the the early early two p.m. coffee. Right. All oh, right, right. We just uh, we just went on a, a Starbucks run. There's a there's a drive through Starbucks. Nice. Uh, that just opened nearby, and uh, it's it's been ruining our wallets. It's been great. Yeah, great yeah. for great for the caffeine intake. Bad for the wallet. Yeah. Also You're- bad for like a general like anti corporate mentality. Yeah. But, like you no, know. Oh, <laughs> y'all gotta get a French press. What the heck? We do. We, we have an arrow we press. Have an press we're, just, we love. we're just out of uh, what? Out of beans right now. No. Yeah. How? It's so expensive. How, that shit adds up. I know. We gotta. We gotta. Are you drinking on the show? Yeah. <laughs> gotta like edit out the. <laughs> oh. Um, should I? Should I not to? I'm like. I'm no, like, you're good. You. You know what? Everybody. Everybody. You're gonna just be hearing a lot of slurping. That's, that's like. What that's oh what god. Is, I'm sorry. Uh, no, actually, uh, you know, I, I we have isotopes de slurp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the mouth de slurper. <laughs> the mouth yeah. de slurper. Yeah. Um, no, but I uh, before before we like kind of dive into your story, I just I want like you know I want everybody to know how in in such a special and like specific way you you impacted our story because oh, straight up you were the first person ever to like discover. Sleeping Lion. Um, when we started, uh, when we started the project, we actually like kind of just wanted to be anonymous, partially because like our friends were an anonymous project, but also because we wanted to see if people liked the music, kind of independent from like knowing us or like whatever. So we put out this song on YouTube because we thought that, that was how you released the song. Right. Um, like we didn't <laughs> not even, even how, SoundCloud. We yeah, just we, on YouTube. <laughs> we Yo. didn't know how like DSPs work. We just like we're, 2015 like, baby. Right. It was it was, and it was the song you made me. And and then like me, you know, a couple days later, you send me a message like I know who you are. <laughs> You're sleeping lion. <laughs> Uh, so we want to do like a, a Berkeley like video, right? Um, which was a you know those were those were big deals. You know those were like right. like if I tried to explain it to people who didn't go to this school, but being known in the Berkeley community is not necessarily the same as being known in other schools because we all grow and, and move out to like do stuff. Right. So if you're known in the Berkeley community, you're sort of like set, you know, with that right. community. That's so fun. And and that was the thing is that video was like straight up kind of like a turning point for us because you know before that people didn't know who we were and after they knew not just Sleeping Lion but that we were in, in Sleeping Lion. Yeah. Um, but I will never forget, um, and this is I think a, a true testament to your patience, um, but also a true testament to how stupid we were. Um, <laughs> oh. We like we sat down, you know, for a meeting, and you were you were throwing like you know ideas of like you know oh we should cut the intro and like oh, st- like cut this part of the bridge like you were sh- you were shooting around ideas which in retrospect were perfectly were great, great suggestions. <laughs> no man, but you know what? To, and and like be, it's so funny. I'm I'm like I have a horrible memory too about shit <laughs> because like hearing that I start getting flashbacks of shit. <laughs> and I realize how like how much I know that I like need to improve 
in many ways like also like I feel like in in the way that I would communicate in school too like and I don't know like coming to someone and like being like hey this is your baby let me just like totally change the way you think about it like and it's tricky because like when I started doing that job it put me in that position a lot you right, know right and I mean it's interesting to hear like from you guys perspective what it is because like life kind of like keeps moving on and a lot of the things of who we are and what we do kind of like stay center and we kind of like move along those but then there's also things that change it's interesting to hear sorry i just well, like just, had to interject because no, i was I, like I, oh shit i think it's really <laughs> funny okay. because like I remember really specifically, like it was genuinely the first instance at, like ever because we were maybe a month old as a band mm -hmm. of like, you know, anybody kind of giving feedback. Yeah, it was giving, the first outside perspective. Ooh, yeah. Up to. And, and, and yeah, I spooky. think because of just sort of how we've, you know, Noah's a pretty fiercely independent person. I'm a New Yorker. Like uh -huh. the, the, I remember when we left the meeting, we were like, who does this guy think he is? And then, and then, <laughs> right. it's, it's, but it took us, it took us like three years, you know, to Damn. like start listening to people to start like understanding like, wow. you know, how important it is to get uh, perspectives to the point that when we, um, we had an opportunity to move, you made me. Mm -hmm. to uh you know to a different distributor and we actually uh sort of got everything remastered because mm -hmm. we were now living with a great you know mastering engineer mm -hmm. um like we, we we cut the beginning of you made me to, Low, to your suggestion so funny. but we actually had to reverse that edit because the isrcs wouldn't right match right because right, right. the timing the timing was yep. different the metadata was different yeah um but we like we we were almost like fuck it let's go to let's go to zero just to like wow. cut this first these first ten seconds yeah so you you uh you were right and also you know what's really interesting is this um this acapella group called Under Arrest uh -huh. in uh, Pennsylvania did a did a cover cool. of, of that's you made exciting me. and that tied that tied this sort of like oh cool like one college another college that's like the so whole, fun um, man y'all were kill like. Y'all are killing, like, I remember when my, like, the guy that I was working for, who was, like, head of the marketing department at Berkeley, he showed me y'all, and I was like, dang, these guys are killing, like, <laughs> I was like, I want to be doing that, too, like, that's, that, it was so, it was so fun and so cool to see how, like, y'all were, were, were doing stuff like that, just coming in, you know, I, I was, like, on my way out, and I feel like, to me it was super inspiring too and again like seeing it in 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 different perspective like there's there's a lot to learn and for me and i'm just kind of like i you never know like how like these relationships develop and like something that someone might say to me might really change in perspective like kind of like hindsight like later right. on yeah you know Definitely. well and and that was i think what what really struck us too is that like like i remember when i first saw your vi your, your video and realizing oh you're like an incredible producer like so, oh your sound design is really tight like um you know starting to hear what you were doing with me at which i'll i'll you know get to later but just oh, yeah. like Thanks. coming to 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 respect you as an artist also taught us how to respect ourselves mm -hmm. enough to listen to other people you know to yeah. be like don't assume you know we i think we came into it like because we were doing something that was different. Nobody could have a point of reference or whatever. Right. Like we, you know, we were a very like self-contained, you know, we wouldn't necessarily collaborate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when we opened ourselves up to it, that was when things started really happening. That's really cool. You know, and, and that was, you know, That's awesome. like that was musically huge. That was, you know, and, and I think great. that you were, you were the first person to be like, listen, you might have an idea of what is right. And that is right in, in, in a context. But there are other ways, there are a million other songs Within one song, you yeah, know, there's a million versions of a song, and you know this could work here, but could you know be different for a video, and and that's been huge, you know. That's so so yeah. Hindsight really is something. You yeah, know? I mean, that there's so much that you said now that I feel like would be cool to unpack. Like first, <laughs> first, first hindsight, like how how I give and receive feedback, because I feel like giving and receiving feedback is an art in itself. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's. Absolutely. It's one of the most difficult things to be vulnerable, you know, because yeah. like I feel like to me as both like a producer and like sort of recently as an artist, it's like 
you, you know, and like if it's not good or if if don't, people don't respond to it in the way that you think that people should respond to it makes you lesser of a person, which is not true, but that's how I feel sometimes. Right, right. So, I mean, I feel like I've sort of had to like get out of myself and like even send shit to the people that I'm most terrified to send shit to and like <laughs> take that feedback. But like sometimes it just ends up becoming feedback that is just hindsight because the song is the song and it's subjective and what you said about like well there's a million songs in one song th that's how i see music like music is moments for me you know and right. and and that's it's what moment holds out and and holds long enough so that i'm excited to listen to the next moment and and why I want to listen to the song again. I feel like I'm making no sense today. No, you're, no, no you're, 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 really you're right insightful. on the money. You, I, you know, don't, don't, you don't, don't edit yourself. I'll do it later, you know, but like the, uh, to that idea. Uh, and one of the things that I find really interesting and, I, and, and again, I really want to talk about, uh, mm -hmm. yours and, and Miet's collaboration, mm -hmm. but later, right, um, right, right. one of the things that I, I think is really interesting about you is that you work in a very specific way in mm -hmm. the same way that Miet works in a very specific way in the same way that mm -hmm. we work in a very specific way. Yeah. And I think that, um, it's been really nice in, you know, recent years that like producers and songwriters are getting more attention, but I think, you know, taking it one step farther, it's worth noting great, um, you know, great teams. Mm. Yeah. You know, like, like, you know, the fact that Amy Allen and Halsey do work mm -hmm. really, really well together. Yeah. The fact that, you know, Ian and Julia like work really, mm -hmm. really well together. Like those, yep. and then, you know, on our, on our strata, like we write really good songs with Alex Venegas and mm -hmm. Sophia Grappari. Um, and we have trouble writing with other people who are in their own right, incredible songwriters just are in our chemistry. Like, I feel like, you know, you know, what, what, what like, like we have balance with Miette, but mm -hmm. like our songs don't sound like the songs you guys do together. Right. Like you guys hit a level that you guys have earned because of the chemistry, because of that that collaboration. And there's no way to sort of guess that or quantify that. Like some chemistries work and some chemistries work incredibly potently and some work fine and some just don't work, no matter how quote unquote good somebody is. So I think, yeah, it's, you know. it. I cannot agree more with that. You know, I mean, I feel like you you can practice like liking like liking working with someone, uh, but and there are ways to ease a session and make a session for you sure know, feel for more feel more comfy. But the, um, but definitely like when when there's the innate like the the like oh this this shit is so easy you know and not necessarily because like wow like I'm so good but it's more like shit like this person makes me feel so comfortable in my own skin and I feel like there's no judgment no ego and it's just like pure unadulterated art making you know yeah, yeah. well that, that person makes you good and then you get to make them good you know like so it's so good when it's like that but I also kind of like when it's not good You know, because because well, that's where the challenge comes from. That's where you get to like that's you where know, the craft comes. That's in. where you you learn to be a producer. Yeah, you know? and also like sometimes there can be good songs that come out of really shitty sessions. You know, oh yeah, because because there's something about tension and there's something about like I feel like when when you have to work harder to make something work, sometimes sometimes very rarely it'll be like special. You know, because yeah. you put you put more into it that you wouldn't have if it flows. You know, I think so, I think some of the more like interesting ideas have come out of difficult sessions right. because it, it it isn't easy, and I have to push myself to be like like you know when there when there's tension in the room or like I'm sitting down at the piano and people are like play some chords and like it isn't a good vibe. I feel like that's when I come up with like the weirdest, sometimes the most interesting stuff because it's like my you know it, but, but it, it has to i think it has to be in an, an inspired environment like even if it's challenging like I, i love when you work with somebody who's like okay that's good but can you beat it but if like the tensions are coming because like 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 somebody's already noped out of the session mm -hmm. like somebody's already called it yeah. Then, yeah then then the energy is just a suck you know yeah it's tricky man it's tricky mm -hmm. because like sometimes sometimes You never know what people are going through, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. you never, you never really know, you know. And I, sometimes, f fuck, sometimes I don't know what I'm going through, you know. <laughs> yeah, like 
I feel that. So, but I, I like the concept of like getting out of your own skin and getting out of your own head. I feel like that's what happens with me. It's a lot of the times, you know, like mm. we, we sort of kind of like, she, she, she takes me, she takes me out of what I usually do, you know, what, yeah. what is natural for me to do. And, and it's just conceptually, like just the approach itself. Like I'm like not trying to be something or be someone, but it's just kind of like what happens when we work together, but it's very similar. Like there's, there's a handful of people that I feel that way about and the stuff comes out so different, you know? And <laughs> that's what I, that's what I think is so fun. And as you say, it's the teams, the collaboration and Part, part of it too is, I mean, I feel like I can't stress enough how important I think for producers, like how, how important artistry should be to producers, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and, and how much like diversification is important for the, for the modern musician of 2020, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't need to do it all. And I feel like that's where, that's where I'm trying to like nudge myself into with like the people that I'm meeting that that are like later on in their in their years like I'm realizing okay like cool we can only get so good at something but then what's what's next and how how can we be of service because it's a service industry too so yeah. how how can we be of service and how can we like just make the best out of a situation by doing not necessarily the least, but not having to do everything, you know? I don't think anybody's been just their own island of genius. Like they've managed to sort of, at least in modern art, has been able, they've been able to surround themselves by, you know, really, really incredible, incredible people. Right. Um, yeah. Who are able to just punch up the ideas. And, and so what, what, what's funny about like my, my experience at Berkeley was that I was just not, not particularly good at stuff, mm. but I talked a lot and that, uh, you know, I'm like that, that seems like a fine place to start, you know, um, I'll get better. I'll get better at the stuff that I have the opportunity to get better at, but right. like I could also like, you know, make a couple calls and see, see what I can do. Well, dude, I mean, I feel like you're 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 opening a whole nother can of worms with what you're saying where it's like <laughs> it's that thing of like i think i've said this three times like the past two days music industry is not music it's industry mm, so yeah. like having lip is amazing and it's great and i feel like you can you can get so much more out of that than being like really proficient because as it's what you say you can get proficient you know, yeah. like proficient, it's like sitting down, doing the work, practicing your shit, like getting it down, muscle memory, getting your shit to sound better by A being yeah. in all that stuff, you know, but we met great people, you know, in our, in our school and in our classes, like great, great musicians who, unless they started Instagram accounts or they got picked up for major tours are not necessarily doing anything. Right. You know, and even now are not, you know, like being great is was always like half the battle, I thought, you know? Well, it's tricky too with what you're saying too, because I, I feel like, I feel like, man, there's so much shit to talk about. And I get so, it's exciting because I don't talk about this shit like <laughs> this so much. So I'm like... <laughs> And that's what, yeah, like, I don't know if it's the coffee. I don't is, know. Yeah. I don't know if I'm hype as hell on coffee. Maybe that's it. <laughs> but like, <laughs> though, like again, I also feel like there's something to think about in terms of like how we perceive doing something and like right. being someone and being something, and and how dangerous that can be because mm -hmm. I feel like it can be so easy to do what we do for the wrong reasons. You know, and to yeah. see other people, it's, it's almost like there's a different, there's a different lens, you know, to it. And I feel like having, having, being able to kind of like switch in between could potentially see someone that you could develop in a different light, you know? Sure. Um, Though, you know, I think, I think everybody has their comfort. Like 
you, you talk about, you know, right, like wrong reasons or right reasons. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I feel like I haven't necessarily given as much thought to that because, you know, uh, uh, at the end of the day, you got to pay your bills. Uh-huh. You know, at the end of the day, you want to laugh with your friends. You know, at the end of the day, you want to make cool stuff. You know, like whenever anybody's like, what do you want? I'm like, I want to make stuff and laugh like that. Are the, those are the two things that, right. you know, are, are, are priorities, you know, but um on the other side, like, I feel like everybody should challenge their comfort zone, but have, yeah, have the sort of right reasons to do so, you know? Like, so agreeing. I you know, love like, that. But that's a ba- that's definitely like a, like a balance and a fine line because there are definitely people who like go outside their comfort zone to make a buck. And I, and I think that's okay. That's totally but you fine. Shouldn't, but you shouldn't like maybe, you know, if that's, if, if it still feels like it's outside your comfort zone after you're like living there, then maybe it's worth sort of reassessing. Yo, you know? but I mean, I and pfft, okay, I think <laughs> I, feel, I, I hear I can hear your brain just like worrying. Man, I mean, it's it's almost a thing where it's like, I th- I think from from what I said, like you're bringing up another side of it because I I think first off, getting outside of comfort zone is like. What I what not what my middle name is, but what I want my bit, middle right. name to be like, you know, one outside your comfort zone, Ariza. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my name is pretty long, but we can make it longer too. Like <laughs> Juan Andres. Can, can you say? Can you say? Can you say your full name? Juan uh, Andres Carreño Ariza for Sergio Harker Mateo Lombo Sarmiento Bonilla. Oh, that's great! Holy, that's the full. Yes, your that's, that's the like full. okay. I mean, it's it's like a Colombian thing where like. You kind of take the last name from your dad and you sandwich it with your mom and then dad, mom, dad, mom, dad, mom. So technically it's Juan Andres Carreño Ariza, but there's the other ones sort of as like Christmas tree ornament shit. Right. <laughs> so I mean, it sounds, it sounds really nice. It's, you know? it's, it's my party trick for, for every time I do podcasts. No, I'm, I'm, kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but first off, comfort zone, 100%. Second of all, Again, making money in the music industry is a, it's such a difficult skill and it's you almost have to be an you have to think like an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, and like figuring that out has been one of the most challenging slash most defeating slash most interesting slash most rewarding slash most not. <laughs> you know, because I feel like I think when I was talking about right and wrong reasons, I wasn't necessarily talking about that versus money, but I think it's about like confirmation and acceptance, you know? And, Mm. and I think that's, that's what I struggle the the most with myself, you know, where, where it's like, I've, I've back in 2018, the reason why I made an artist's name and where the reason why I started making music under like an artist name was sort of like a like a mistake sort of like an accident like I didn't really necessarily want to be like like an artist entity you know and I kind of like wanted to do it for fun and I didn't necessarily think about like finding a way to monetize that and as the years kind of passed like you sort of like I feel like milestones become a beautiful thing and uh, it's a du- double-edged sword you know right. i i start kind of like feeling myself checking spotify for artists every <laughs> like when i started i was like looking at it like like 40 times a day and oh yeah now it's a thing where like yeah i check it all the time and and like if a song doesn't do what i'm expecting it to do i get bummed out but then i realized that that's sort of what I'm talking about with right and wrong reasons. Like, am I right. doing this shit for people to hear it? Or am I just doing it because I want to express myself, you know, and well, I want to But it's also sure. where you glean, it's where you glean self-value. Like, I right. feel like yeah. I have almost like a wall up between like how I let my music reflect on me as a person. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel, you know, That's like, interesting. I feel, you know, somebody doesn't like a song or somebody like, I don't. I don't necessarily take it personally. I, I think I do now more than I did back, mm-hmm. you know, back then because I feel like the most creative and I feel like, I feel like our plans and our, you know, rollouts and, you know, how a song does is a reflection of like 
my own brain and my own creativity and like whatever. Right. That's where I that's where I start, you know, to, to take things personally. You know, so <laughs> whereas I, I take like snares personally. Like, <laughs> like, like every every inch every inch of Bro, the production. Like, are, that's that's my signature. Like that's that's what I put out in the you world. You are like, brilliant though. Literally like, literally if I damn. literally if a song if a song doesn't do as well as I want it to, I'm like, it's cause I didn't pick the right fucking snare. No, and, no, and, and, and I'm like I'm like because that guitar wasn't EQ'd hype that's enough. Like so I just like funny. it like that's that's the shit that makes me get in my head. I'm like, we didn't email so and so. I didn't follow up on Instagram there. Like, I, we didn't have a good enough like rollout. Like, I, you know, since the beginning, I'm sorry, but I love y'all's dynamic. Like, <laughs> it's literally like the visual representation of left right brain. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's so yeah, beautiful, so. and I think it's so like. I'm I'm just jelly, like 100% fucking jealous for that because <laughs> I feel like when when you have when you, when you have a music partner like that, it's almost like y'all can kind of like split things and it's it's so funny that that you feel like it falls on like, "Oh, I didn't EQ the guitar right." Yeah. Like I'm like damn, like I I kind of like wish I could kind of like, I don't even know how I think about that shit. Like, <laughs> I, I think for me, it's changed a little bit because if I've shown like some of my like heroes, some of the, the stuff that I made and if they react positive, positively to it, even if it doesn't do well when I put it out, I've kind of like made peace with that, you know? Yeah. And I've started making peace with that because I feel like, <sighs> And and again, that's sort of where I go back into it's my my constant inner monologue of like, why am I doing this? Why do I do this? But it's sort of turning into like putting music out, it's turning into a drug for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well and, and I, you know, I think I used to look at like capital S success as like this one specific thing. Like how how are we doing on Spotify or like right. what live shows are we playing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I think when I started looking at it sort of holistically, like, okay, you know, we've got, we've got credits, um, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in sound, in the sound department for film, we right. have a podcast, like we mm -hmm. are writing with and spending time with like all of these artists and, and stuff like that. When, like, if we, if I were to just look at my Spotify, I would think that we were okay, but like nothing to, you know, like but, but a little bit underwhelming. But when I think about like Spotify being sort of the tip of the iceberg for like everything else we're involved with, I feel really good about our career and Yo, like what it means to be successful. That's, that's, but I, that's the name of the game. And, and I yeah. think it's, it's going back to that whole thing of like di diversification. Yeah. One million percent. I can't stress yeah. it enough. Like I, I kind of wish, I mean, I think Berkeley was amazing and it was a great experience. I, I, I wish I would have like known a lot of things then, you know, because I feel like once coming out, that's almost how I feel like when my life started, you know, in right. the industry. And it's tricky because like being where I'm from, you, you see cats like around here in LA that have been around forever that kind of like are, are, are growing into that. And by 18, they're like doing crazy shit too. And like, it's also a thing where like, oh damn, like I'm 26 now. It feels like I'm old as shit and it feels like I haven't <laughs> done enough. And it it's that constant thing. But I mean, all in all, if there's enough irons in the fire and I, it, to, to me, what it boils down to is like, if at the end, I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, like I did what I needed to do. I worked on the on these tracks that I needed to finish. I wrote something. I kind of have like, I don't know if if by the end of the day I can be like, okay, I did everything that I could, independent of like where where I'm at or what's happening or what monthly listeners I'm at. Because damn, it's you, well, you laid the foundation, and in music, every action has an unequal chaotic reaction. So That's you don't know. Too. I love that. Like. We don't know like what a you know what a Berkeley video or what you know lunch you know will turn into Whoa, et cetera et cetera so yeah. you know do you remember by the way that uh, sometimes Noah and I would talk in unison oh my god bro that was something that we like we were really conscious about we're like okay we're gonna be like a two headed giant and when we talk in unison it's gonna freak people out <laughs> it's so scary <laughs> so freaky no I mean shit 
can't agree more with with mm-hmm. everything you said. It's I think I I feel like it's just the the ongoing eternal struggle of feeling like nothing's ever gonna be enough, but then accepting that is great because then yeah, you're pretty yeah. you're pretty free after that. Yeah, you know? well, you, you realize you that it doesn't yeah. shit doesn't matter. You know, you might as so you might as well do it. You know, and you might make as stuff well, and laugh. I swear, man, just yeah. make stuff and laugh. You no, know, <laughs> for sure. I mean, I feel like that's that's why I I keep putting shit out. You know. Cause yeah. well, and you're you're prolific too, which is like it's it's cool. Like I was, you know, sometimes in these things we go through, like you know, somebody's got five singles. We talk about each single, like mm. itemized. I'm like, if we went through every song you've done or worked on, <laughs> like I picked three or like four. I'm like, I'm like, you have you have dozens yeah. of songs, you know, That's and they're crazy. all and they all slap. I was like trying to parse through, you know, parse through through them. Thank you. But bro. Uh, rewinding the clock a little bit, you you were born in Colombia. Yes. Uh, so, I would love to know about like what it was like to grow up there and what it was like to move out here. Well, I've always felt like the underdog, even like growing up and being in Colombia. And I, I've been a very lucky human, so I I haven't lacked from things ever. Mm-hmm. And, and I can thank my parents for that. And they've showered me with love eternally. They're <laughs> incredible humans um, that I love very much private school in Colombia and very lucky to to learn about a lot of different shit, not necessarily music. I did international baccalaureate. I oh, yeah. oh yeah, we so, were all so yeah, we. IB kids. You you guys are IB kids yeah. too? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> Stop. Actually, oh my God. Y'all, we, that's another rabbit hole that we need to talk about <laughs> another time. But I feel like... W- yeah, IB destroyed yeah. me and kind of made me who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I will never get I will never get those hours of sleep back. I'm tired as a person now, like in my soul. Um, Yo. You know, four 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 page essays nightly on like no, movies that you no. had to watch that evening. You know, like uh yo. It was crazy. Like, I mean, I feel like it breaks your spirit, but. I feel like that's kind of like what sort of made Berkeley j- just like Hogwarts. For me, yeah, you know, literally. I was like, "Is this is this what I have to do?" I don't. Well, yeah, whenever kids were were complaining, you know, like, "Oh my god, like I got to do like you know one page of homework, you know, uh, that's due in three days." I'd be like, "Are you kidding me right yeah, now?" Ber- Berkeley, like, Berkeley was a breeze. It was a Yo, breeze. Ma- the math portfolios still haunt me in my sleep, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Like, and because I couldn't do what was it studies? I didn't do math studies. I was on math law, and that thing still haunts my dreams like every single (laughs) night of my life um but i i guess moving on from that um (laughs) ib and i didn't do music so i couldn't like what 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 the whole concept was was like okay if i'm gonna if i'm gonna be able to do something the industry back then it's it's very clicky industry you know Mm. And I never, I was a metalhead, so I was never really into like anything that anyone was doing back home, except now I'm like freaking out about Don Omar and Looney Tunes. And I mean, it's not, they're not Colombian, but they, that's what, <laughs> that's what people were listening to when I was growing up and shit. But it, it was a thing where like my, my dream and my, my life goal was, okay, I got to get into Berkeley no matter what and like we didn't like we didn't have the money for me to be able to go so Mm. it was like okay how am I gonna be able to get there and I I, at first like at 15 I like became absolutely obsessed with going and it became my life and I knew that if I slacked in school I wouldn't be able to like my parents wouldn't let me apply and like get 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 that done so I had to kind of like keep that one thing afloat and at the same time practice five hours a day playing guitar you know that's because I was like I'm gonna get in playing guitar you know so Mm -hmm. that was that was it on one hand on the other hand it was kind of like at the same time I saw the five-week program so I was like how can I get in with a scholarship so I found out about rock workshop so I applied for rock workshop and I got in and I was like crazy. I'm like, (laughs) and I remember like before I was going to apply sitting down with my dad and being like, I'm going to go to Berkeley. And he was like, are you fucking crazy? Like, do you think money (laughs) grows on trees? And 
I've been like very impulsive and shitty and annoying in my life. Like kind of like <laughs> I mean join the club, you know. <laughs> but it was a thing where like I That's actually my middle name is uh shitty impulsive annoying. Nate shitty impulsive annoying flag. <laughs> oh my god, stop. No. But but that's kind of what like I remember sitting down with him and being like I'm going to go and he was like, "Are you insane? Like do you think money grows on trees?" I was like such a sh- annoying shitty kid. I was like I'm not asking for your permission. I'm just telling you. Yo. <laughs> okay. She always okay. tells that story. I'm like, oh my God. What an, ugh, what an, but I was like, I know, I know I can't, like, we can't do it. So I need to figure out a way to do it. And by doing the rock workshop, everything was paid. So I just went there and then I auditioned again and got another scholarship for the next five week. And then I did the next five week in 2011. And then I did another audition to get a scholarship for it. And I got a partial scholarship to be able to go. And like then then my parents were like, okay, we're doing this. We're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. So I get there. And then like it was a thing where like I, I started like trying to like apply for like do appeals and grants to try to get more and more and more. And then it was sort of a thing where like at some point I started like trying to develop people at school and then like I kind of got connected to like the marketing department at Berkeley because of some of the videos that I got commissioned to do. Right. And then I was sort of working like getting some honestly those last my last year because I finished Berkeley in three and a half. Right. Right. That's crazy. The the last uh, man, the last year feels like a blur, you know, because it was I, I felt like I had one foot in and one I was doing three jobs at the time in my last year, which was kind of like playing for the songwriting department as a session player. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, doing the marketing shit and uh, doing like ensemble paid shit. And it was great. It was really fun. It was really awesome. But I was kind of like thinking about what was going to go next. And uh, my last semester, there was uh, this dude who came to give a master class on my jingle class with C- Kurt Biederwolf. And he was the owner of this company called Human Worldwide. Mm. Uh, and he was super awesome, super nice dude. Uh, and I remember after everything, we just geeked about Wayne Krantz and like... <laughs> like super geeky guitar shit. And then he ended up offering me a job to go to New York to work as a composer, kind of like like apprentice under him as a staff person. And I said I wanted to go to LA because I wanted to tour. You know, that's right. That was my, I want, I was like, I want an MD and I want a tour. So LA is the place. New York's not the place. He was like, okay, I end up coming to LA and. Should I t- say the spiel the whole situation? I feel like it's so <laughs> I, I'm 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 like along for the ride. I'll uh, I'll sort of footnote interject. Yeah, um, that you know I think one of the things that I've always admired, not necessarily about the ethos of the school, but the ethos of the students at Berkeley, uh-huh. um, is that everybody's just keeping an eye out. Like everybody's looking yeah. to see what to do. It's funny. Like I, I do remember my, my last year at Berkeley was also a, a blur because I was, you know, I was working at the phone-a-thon and, you know, mm-hmm. ask, asking the alumni for money and uh, wow. doing this. Uh, I was president of the Sound Design Network. I was doing nice. the double major shit. We started Sleeping Lion, like all that. Like, and, and so, yeah, you really don't have time to even think you're just like, you know, on your feet doing everything like that. But it's yeah. also about kind of what you focus on and, I think that we got a, a head start very specifically because Halsey had told us about the the blogs. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we were doing the blog stuff really early and it became pretty clear that like I was, I was kind of skipping classes because I was working on other stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it became clear that I was going to drop out. And when my, when my grandparents found out they were livid, my parents were like, whatever, whatever. Cause they're both like artsy, creative, fartsy uh-huh. people. My grandparents are, are pretty, you know, a little more traditional mm-hmm. and they wanted me to get a degree. Right. And so they called They're they're like, they were furious. And my, my oh. grandfather kind of point blank says like, don't you want to make money. Like, don't you want to like live a good life? Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, that's why I got to do this now. <laughs> that's what I got to work. Cause this is Dude. no, cause, cause like, you know, anytime a trend happens or every time an opportunity happens in music, like you have that pocket to ride that wave or else you got to 
you're back to zero. Like, gotta you have to take figure it out early, the next man. Thing. Yeah. Gotta t- gotta so, see gotta see what's starting to move the needle before it actually like pops and then everyone is doing it, you know? So I mean in a lot of ways the only reason we have a leg to stand on five years later is because we took advantage of one specific opportunity. Very smart. That we figured out about, you know, early. That, you so know, say smart. somebody like Halsey or whatever took advantage of earlier. You know, yeah. like um and that's just how just how, that's how the the great machine moves, but yeah, I, I, I want to. I want to know the rest of your your spiel. I know. So you you worked on um, Julia Michaels' song "Happy," right? Uh, I played on. I played on "What a Time" and uh, yeah. is it called "Into You"? Yeah, yeah. On on inner monologue part one. Did you work with Riley Knapp at all from RKCB? Mm, no, I I was it was just basically Ian there. Oh, cool. Kind of cool, being cool, cool. like big bro vibes. And Ben Rice was also engineering the session. It was a That's blast. an insane EP. That's a crazy good, Yo, good record. I'm like, like, I still, like the first time I heard it, I was, my brain exploded. <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, he's, Ian's so great, man. He ex- like produced the whole thing and he's just a machine, man. He's like unreal. He's a beacon of light, you know. <laughs> yeah, I we think. had a, a a BMI breakfast with him. Nice. And he was a he, he's he's seems super nice he's and, so and funny. really funny and honest. Uh, super. Honest. What continuing your story? Right you know, after I made my footnote, how did you get? You know, how did you? You know, sort of get out to LA and, right. and wind up working with the anchor Patrick. So I guess it was a thing where where. I talked to the 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 music house human guy. I come out for the first six months out here and I'm working as a staff composer, kind of like not necessarily intern, but more like doing the same thing a staff composer does, but like mm. being under and like them like kind of like whipping me into shape and, and getting me to kind of like compete. Uh, and in the meantime, I like ended up doing like some ads for like Starbucks, Hulu, Verizon, okay, stuff like no, <laughs> like I mean, but it was like a hundred and eighty pieces of music in like six oh. in six months, and I got like three. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like one of those things. But I mean, it was great experience. I still work for them. Uh, I still do like freelance shit for them, and they're amazing. And and I love working to picture. I think. Picture and music should always go hand in hand. I'm mm. I'm first off like a visual lover. And if I could have a music video for every single song I would make, I would love that. But it's expensive. So I'm trying to learn how to do it myself. But I think being film people is almost like um like a, a blessing and a curse. Cause I've had I've had music video ideas for every song right. I've ever put out. Mm-hmm. But because I know I can't execute it the way that like is in right. my head. Right. You know, you know, with like a French New Wave lean or oh like Oh my a, god, of course. Like I, yeah. I, I wind up scrapping it. F- film nerds are a special kind of crazy. Incredible. No, I, I get it. So just to kind of like give the whole yeah. annoying spiel. Yeah. Uh six months after I did this audition on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> uh because at the same time like the idea was for me to tour and i ended up getting offered like this kind of like post as uh the guitar player for for an uh a uk artist based out here called macy k and then it was sort of a thing where um i became her md after that and then i started producing for her i worked on like for two years on this album where basically like we ended up going to abbey road and doing a hundred piece orchestra with the orchestrator that did like Finding Nemo and Avatar. And and then at the same time, I was kind of playing around here, you know, I've been re I'm really grateful to to the Macy team because she's like, first off, super amazing. And like now uh, there's going to be more stuff coming out. Uh, I like also randomly ended up doing like the the end credits for uh, Jean Michel Cousteau film Jacques Cousteau's son, a oh. film like narrated by Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> and uh, we did like the title track with that. She wrote it. She's a crazy writer, and then kind of like I've been doing that with them. And that's sort of kind of like been holding everything everything in place. So I stopped touring. I stopped. I decided to not tour. And at the same time as working with her, I'd be 
kind of like doing my thing, you know, and like doing different stuff with different people. In the meantime, it was a thing where I, I kind of got connected to the gal that does the title track for the Naruto anime thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I kind of have done like her past two albums, like a few songs on both. And then it was a thing where I was like playing around and there's this event put on by the app Jam Card. Oh, yeah. Where like I kind of started doing those very early on when they were doing it at Andy's house and in, in the house in the hills before it like turned into like this super huge giant thing. And uh, there were a lot of people going and I I played one. I was in the house band when we were playing with Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye. <laughs> Oh yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, I was like playing and blah blah blah. I stopped playing, came out, and I saw Ian, and I was like, mm. "Oh my lord!" Like I was starstruck. I was absolutely <laughs> like, I came up to my girl, and I was like, "Oh was, my god! Oh my god! It's Ian Kirkpatrick!" Because I was, was like, this post New Rules? Was this like after all that, or it was before? I think. It was like I I had like found him because I heard Bad Liar and I was like, what the heck? Mm. This is insane. And then who made this? Wait, same guy made uh Want to Want Me? What? Yeah, <laughs> so right. I was just mystified by how like this guy is an absolute chameleon and how like insane all his shit sounds. And I was like, I wanna sound like that. Like I wanna be able to like get to such precise, clean simple yet complicated but not complicated amazingness uh so i like was like listening to all his pensados plays episode and and to like the different like interviews he's done and shit so i knew what he looked like and i just came up to him and i was like bro you're in <laughs> kirkpatrick right <laughs> and he was like what yeah he was so nice he was like super nice i was a weirdo but he was like he was like what's up like you recognize me that's ridiculous i'm like no dude like i i basically was like i love you like i'm <laughs> very emotional so i was like i just want to be you when i grow up uh <laughs> and he was like what are you up to and then kind of like he saw me play so he was like oh shit like let's have you play on some of the stuff and i ended up going to his house and like playing on a on a kiara song or something and um it was also a thing where like then I had started making my own shit and I played it for him. And he was like, he gave me really, really dope advice. Like, it's just kind of like those wisdom nuggets that someone says in like, like 30 seconds that changed my life, you know? Mm. Right. So it was like a bit of that. And like, it's, I mean, I look up to him so much. It's graciously turned into an awesome friendship. He's, a great dude and from there on like I've also kind of like met other of my heroes and it's it's been a thing where like I don't know it's being in LA you know and like kind of yeah. like doing the thing and 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 he like called me he was like I had just texted him to like wish him like Merry Christmas or something and then he was like hey are you free next Tuesday I'm doing a session and then I show up and it's for like the Julia thing. And I just played on it. I was like, I don't know if it's going to make it on the record. Was she there at no, that session? No, she wasn't. Mm. But uh, a lot of people think she is because she posted the video of me playing piano. <laughs> She's like, how is she? I'm like, she sounds like an amazing human, but I haven't met her. And <laughs> but I didn't even know that shit would make the record. And it did. And it was great. And then sort of from then on, like. I've learned a lot from Ian and he sent me stuff and I've kind of like thrown shit into like songs and I guess he like ends up using it. That's kind of how I like ended up working on Pretty Please by, mm. by Dua. And I don't know, man, I'm just trying to get less shitty. I like making <laughs> stuff and like... That's a very Ian Kirkpatrick thing to say. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I'm always going to feel like that. Um, yeah. no matter what it is that is happening. And even if there's like confirmation and all that stuff, but that's, I, that's why I like to make my, that, that's why I've liked making my own shit, you know? And that's why I've kind right. of like tried to just like, I was like, I'm going to make one song a month in 2018. 
and I was just putting them out and not, no idea. And I was just like finishing them and like sending it to DistroKid to put out in two days. <laughs> so like <laughs> right. most of those Well, I, I think terribly. it goes down to what I was saying about like looking at things holistically. Like on the one hand, you have Julia and Dua Lipa credits. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, nobody nobody will ever take that shit from you. Like that yeah, that is a part of your career and journey on the other side. Like you know, you want to define yourself by by something different or something specific. Mm -hmm. And so you put your, you know, your energy into making your artistry and like right. making your, your you know, your music. And I think that that's, that's again, like to, to what we were saying when we first started the conversation, like it's all about how you view your own kind of like iceberg. Yeah. Because I, sure. there are plenty of songwriters who, you know, who define their entire uh, career around like what credits they have. And there are right. other musicians who define their entire career over how many Spotify streams they have. Right. And there are others who who define their career by just the output alone. Like, have I been able to put out, you know, as much music as I want? Am I, you know, am I getting less shitty, et cetera, et cetera? Man. You know, I, I think and I think I think that's the first time, and I'm sorry to interrupt because No, you're good. I just need to like put a footnote on that. I don't think I've heard that explained so dead on, you know? Because I feel like, I feel like, and with a lot of my artist friends that I like produce because I love what they do, I feel like there's, there's sort of like an unknown, it's, it's very nebulous, you know, it's a very unknown, like, mm, what should I do? Am I doing things right? And like, basically what you're saying kind of like describes what people kind of have in their mind as success and Sometimes, like, I feel like I oscillate in between the lines of, like, oh, people are not caring about what I'm doing. People don't give a fuck. And then it's a thing where I'm like, hold up, hold up. Like, I'm going to wake up. And if I wake up with 10 million streams on something, I don't think I'm going to feel much different, you know? Right. Like, like I'm just going to go and make myself coffee and, like, probably feel shitty that I feel like I'm not good enough. Yeah. So might as well make something out of it. And... That's why I've kind of like just put all this energy into like making making my my own shit, you know, and then kind of like having that seep into like whatever else happens. And like now be, before it was a thing where I wasn't pitching anything. Now it's in a very short amount of time. I've like kind of like had a catalog because I caught up to myself. Right. And it's the first time that I've had other songs that I can shop and, but I'm not like published and I'm kind of like, like I'm also unsigned and it's finding, finding the way to do the most damage with the least. Also, there was like, I think I've had the best worst year in my life because mm. I've like a year ago I fell and fucked up my hand and like. Oh, shit. Tore three tendons in my left hand, which, like, oh, Jesus. I had to go home and, like, get surgery. And, like, a doctor in the U.S. was like, you're not going to be able to move your hand normally in three years. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, it was not like you're not going to be able to play. It was like you're not going to be able to move your hand normally. <sighs> so I kind of had to, like, go home and, like, at the same time produce one-handed a lot of shit. And kind of like, I mean, it's, it's a thing where I kind of like before quarantine hit, I've already kind of like having to deal with the fact that my life drastically changed in that sense. Mm. Are, are you, are you better now? Like, I, 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 can you use your hands? I can use my hand. Uh, it's completely different. You know, I definitely can't play the way I used to. I don't have the same stamina that I had. It's still very limited, you know, like if you if you compare mm. both like but, you know, I mean, it's a thing where it's like I've I've just like taken all that energy and channeled it into like making shit, you know. Well, and and that's uh, again, I think you're the kind of person you, you almost even like taught us this this concept like you you not only work hard but you work smart and somebody who mm. works hard and smart gets just like three times more stuff done That's so amazing. you know even though you you're up against this limitation i don't imagine it's like limiting you because you're just finding other ways of like channeling your you know your energy and your creativity and and, and whatnot well you know? in in a lot of ways i feel like that's sort of what's like paving way for me to decide what i want to do you know because before mm -hmm. it was like oh like should i tour should i go should i get out there should i do other shit 
now it's the thing where it's like, okay, Juan is going to produce. Juan is going to Juan is going to sit in his desk for like 19 hours a day or <laughs> 17 hours a day and make shit and like decide that that that's the thing and like do the artistry to have it be a a, a car a business card you know right that's what it is that's what it boils down to if it's a thing where like the other thing kind of like starts like becoming a thing in itself cool awesome great but <laughs> the plan of it is just to have 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 a, a a presentation you know and 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 also being able to stretch and not having anyone tell me what I can or can't do and also kind of kind of like exercising the best it's working hard and we're working smart and like trying to like I love to get into random shit like I love video editing. Mm, yeah. Shout out, IV. Your, your your videos are solid. Like oh, I love man. just like Thank you know you. you you put the googly eyes on the people and right. It's so, it, they're silly. I just have fun. You know. Yeah. I just try to have fun with that and like now it's almost like I'm veering into like getting into animation. You know and DIY mm. animation. I'm, I'm like trying to like find apps and like see how I can like streamline my process and kind of get a vibe. You know, well, uh, it's kind of speaking on your artistry and and this sort of new chapter for you. I think one of your most potent collaborations is with Me at Hope, who mm. we we just put out a song with. We just did a an episode uh, as well with. I don't know if you knew this, but she was like literally like my first friend at Berkeley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I heard in the we, podcast too that you guys toured. Yeah, we toured together, right. which is so funny because like you know. You didn't necessarily know that we knew her like right, really, really well right. from like, you know. Insane. So when, when you guys first started working together, I'm like, oh my god, this is like a super small world. Such I'm a like, small that, world. I'm like, is that the same one, uh, one from school? Is that the same? The same yet? The, yeah, right. is that the same yet? You know, man, um, she's my but, she's my soul sister in music. She's so dope. You can here's the thing. What's crazy is you can hear it like on repeat is a jam. Um, oh, like man, my my favorite song uh, off of the Pendulum record is Enough, oh, and you can song. hear you can hear just this like incredible collaboration in just how how well her vocals and her writing sits with your production. Oh man, like it's Thanks. it's a slammer. Like those drums are crazy. Will it ever be enough to find me? It's literally that EP was wild. We did that shit in three days, you know, oh my God. like one one song a day, you know, and like from scratch. It was it was just the thing where like with with her, it's just like that, you know. It's it's very it's it's cool because the the lines get super blurred. With her, I feel like that's that's how I've found that I'm getting a lot better in 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 songwriting too, you know, because mm. it's a thing where like. It's just us two in this room, and by the end of the day, there there will be something, you know. But it's because she she kind of like gets something so weird out of me, you know. And and I <laughs> well, like, is it is it true that in her song alone, you didn't use a grid? Well, like that's crazy. That's so, so cool. So so it was. It, it's not necessarily that I didn't use grid. I just like we did the verse, <laughs> and then. She like we kind of like talked for a second, and she was like, "Well, maybe in the chorus we can like do like a." And I was like, "Great, cool." I was like, "We're we'll just dip there, like we'll just go there, cause that's so dope." And I feel like <laughs> one one of the most important things that I think in music production that I think producers should keep in mind is that it's sort of like. The, the music needs to speak to the to to the songwriting and to the words and like they they need to they need to it, it should it should always have a purpose like doing a gesture shouldn't be just for the sake of of the gesture or to flex or for for the sake of like oh yeah that sounds cool but if 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 it's part of like the subtext and the picture like the the reason why i kind of wanted to do that is to just kind of like make you feel alone you know right. like just like have you like put you in a space and like it's very like kind of like broken down in a lot of ways and like things come in and out and like it it sort of like draws you in and then 
what I wanted. And, and I think it, a lot of it happened subconsciously too, you know, mm-hmm. where, where it was a thing where I just wanted to like sweep the rug off and just be mm. like, you're going to feel alone as shit right now. You're going <laughs> to, I want you to feel like shit right now. Like, I want you to like, kind of like. Dude, you should put that on a mug. Just be yeah. like, you, you get, you get to work. You're like, I want you to feel like shit right now. Like, <laughs> Well, but it's, it's, it's no, like. it's true. I it's, get it. It's yeah. my, it's manipulation. You know, it's like, I wanted to speak through the, the music without, without necessarily like taking away. Like, it's just kind of like highlighting what she's doing, you know? Yeah. And it's kind of like. Even putting it, putting, putting it on, on relieve, on like, on like, it's making it 4D, you know? Yeah. <laughs> adding, kind of, adding layers, pulling you in. Did, did you throw some Spanish to get that? What was that? What was the word? you? It's like, kind of like when, when there's like depth to the picture, you know, like when, mm, when you yeah. have those like paintings that kind of like have texture on it. Like yeah. you can, well, you can see it to the side, you know? I, I, I think what I always appreciate about about you as a producer is that you, you kind of, you know, in, in a way that we, we've, you know, embraced and then abandoned and then tried to embrace again, like you're a weirdo, you know, <laughs> yeah. you've got like weird you. sounds, you've got like you. these crazy things going down that work. I mean, they it all yeah, just like works you. together. And I think, I and, it, and it carries this, this energy. Um, and it's, and it's really, really distinctive. And I feel the same way about me. It's writing like, um, you know, f- from the days we toured together, mm-hmm. she wrote songs that, had a pop sensibility and, you know, obviously her voice is incredible, mm-hmm. but they are also a bit disquieting, a bit strange, a bit, yeah. you know, go it goes somewhere you don't expect them to, melodies that go places you don't expect them to. And I think that that's where this collaboration is so cool. And and I, I'm, I'm so excited that you guys have this this project now. Right. You're in a duo now. Yeah. You know, you're in a duo. So you know, the, the natural synthetic. The natural synthetic. Um, when I, yeah, even even name is just like is just so you guys, you know. Like I love man. It's so funny because it's just it's just it's our back and forth. You know, she said yeah. she said something like like I remember we were just texting about something and she was like, yeah, our shit sounds like so like like natural yet synthetic. I was like, boom, band name, easy. <laughs> well, bam. also. She she played us nervous after her interview, right. and we were we were actually losing our that shit. Song is so oh, on the couch, man. so so, so good. That chorus. fun I, and you sound great man, you, you guys sound great you. together like it's you know it's i gotta thank my 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 best friend antares autotune uh <laughs> it's the only thing that can get me to sound good no no she's i, I always joke around i say i tell people i have a, I have a great voice for processing oh hell yeah same no <laughs> dude she's she's so amazing like and there's Oh yeah. We we we're sitting on like four or five songs depending there's one song that might be for someone else but yo every time like even on Zoom we've been writing and it's just like that's special. Dude, there's the next one. I'm just I don't like I just get excited. I'm like Is I'm it like, obsessed? No, it's <laughs> sacrifices. I'm just a slave to my own desire. Looking for anything to feed the fire Never leave me to my own devices Cause I can't keep up with these sacrifices I'm just a slave Okay And a- obsessive is like someone like Kind of like spitting into someone else's face It's horrible Like it's <laughs> just like it's Yo, just, song is nasty It's just it's so hard I appreciate yeah. that It's destruction You know And and yeah. I mean Conceptually I'm trying to like Kind of like find a bit Like I feel like now The level that I'm trying to find Is how much damage can I do with the least You know Yeah And how I, lo- I, love, the, I love the way you put that damage yeah. Like how, how can you How can you be most effective yeah. With the least amount of like, you know, we were accidentally maximalists and so now we're trying to sort of get back to. Oh, dude, I've been a maximalist. Like Berkeley made me a maximalist, you know, and yeah. like 
and and there's fun in that you know and and i do like my stupid videos are just kind of like okay i'm gonna be like the colombian dollar store version of jacob collier right <laughs> but but because i like that shit you know yeah. and because i wanna yeah. i wanna see how much i can flex and see how much i can get better and like try out shit that i wouldn't necessarily do do in a song you know yeah but with with her it's just Man, sacrifices is exciting. I'm I'm excited about. I, I'm just I'm just pumped because we, we we don't have to answer to anyone, you know. Right. And and I'm starting this other like it's kind of weird because this year was a thing where I think I started three bands. <laughs> right. <laughs> like that I have does. another band with uh with my friend Emily Browning who is like this absolute freak of nature singer guitar player insane 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 and we she's had, not so she's so good oh man she's so dope we had put you out, guys already had a song together right we have an ep called oh yeah uh called wtf because yep. the, the band is called by the face and that like <laughs> same as how like with with her it's different because like we only have written one song together called distracted and it's it's like what 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 i consider would be like the Walgreens version of like a baby between Beach Boys and D'Angelo. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, but it's so fun and she's amazing and she's super great. And she brings out, again, like another thing uh, with another friend of mine, Cole. I don't know if you guys know Cole. She's like... K- K-O-L-E? Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. awesome. Yo, Cole is an, like, same, like same as with Miette, Cole is that too you know and and we started this project called the rws and we're sitting on like seven eight songs that i think is like some some of my like my like transformative in terms of like how i'm trying to get better and she brings like the most poppiest side of me so Mm -hmm. it kind of like feels like 1975 mixed with like like super poppy kind of bubblegummy, but not bubblegum, but more like kind of like primary color shit, you know? Mm. Like it <laughs> That's cool. a good way of putting cool, it. Cool, cool. I, I have to commend you on your, your, your elevator pitches are actually pretty incredible. <laughs> I feel like I've, you know, whenever it's like, so what's your genre? I'm like, oh, we're kind of like pop adjacent, you know, like, like it's not right. pop till yeah, it's popular, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Like, I feel you. I mean, it's, it's weird because it, it comes after. Cause like, usually when people would ask me like, as as Ariza, what am I doing? I'm like, I have no idea. Like it it doesn't right. It's purely genreless because it's what I'm listening to and it's because what I'm fucking with at the time. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it's just that. It's purely that. If I like nervous happened because I was listening to way too much Ethan Gruska at the time. <laughs> you know? And and I went on a blunder like that. And then so it's yeah. kind of like 1975 Jeremy Zucker loot shit with, right with call and i'm just pumped because it's 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 like again like kind of like production wise super minimalist but we kind of don't give a fuck so <laughs> so we're being unapologetic and like taking the rug off and and doing that and then with my girl like we kind of like has have this pa- passion project called koi panda where we've been doing like sort of like crosby stills and nash mixed with like bon <laughs> weird <laughs> harmony shit i don't know there's just like i'm so you know you're, you're under you're underachieving you're being lazy you know <laughs> bro and i mean i'm just like i can't not make shit because i go insane if i don't and then well you're, i mean you're prolific but again you're working you're working uh smart you know you're working smart like it's and it seems like they're projects that are are you are clearly passionate about so it's not like i feel like from a time management standpoint, it's hard to work on a lot of projects that you're not feeling because I feel there's you. so much drag yeah. around, like just trying to get through stuff. Whereas if you're feeling your projects, you're sh- you're firing on all cylinders. You're like yeah. done, 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 because you just want it to exist, you know. But I, I guess with my like my my mind, like my philosophy of life is like what I want to do is the shit that I don't love and the shit that I don't like. I want to get. To the point where I like it, you know, Mm. I want to, I want to get to the point where I'm like, 
you know what? I fuck with it. The, how can I? How can I make myself fuck with this? You know? Y- you were saying something. Yeah, like that's that. the, that's something I found like doing work for hire stuff where I like I have to crank out like four songs in an afternoon. Like working on a Come bunch on, of songs at once. Bro. I would I would oh, I would yeah. always end up in a batch with one that was my least favorite, and I would try to be like, how can I like fuck with this until it this one in particular is my favorite? And I would like cycle around until like every single one had something that I was like. Even though like I'm tired and I've been like pooping this stuff out for hours, like there's still something about this that I could say like I fuck with this, like this is cool. I'm proud of some aspect of this. Yo, there and there ain't nothing wrong with creatively pooping stuff. You know, yeah. that's that's my that's my way of working. You know, I I I find that I like I think I put ninety five percent on the day off, and the rest mm. is like. I don't like tweaking shit. I don't like sitting on shit. You know, I'm going. Well, in- it's not glamorous. It's not. It's not particularly creative. Just making something. You know, it's it's creative making a song work, but but making a song technically like dial in is not a particularly sexy thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I mean, it's also a thing where it's like I don't. I like finishing shit, man. I feel like mm. if I don't finish shit, I start going absolutely insane. You know, I I start, I start getting like anxious and I start getting sad, you know? So I'm like, yeah. it's, it's almost a thing where like, and, and now I think I'm reaching a weird point where I'm like almost sitting on like 35 songs that I want to put out. But I mean, I put out an album in March and now I'm kind of writing in Spanish too, but by myself. <laughs> so it, it's kind of like, sounds like, Tame Impala, James Blake, Colombian dollar store version shit. Right. <laughs> but I love that. I also find that it's like that project is kind of like also one of the things that I'm more most excited to put out because it's the first one that I'm like, whoa, I think this is me, you know? Right. Mm. And it's the first time that I felt that because with the other thing is it's amazing and it's awesome. And there's always something fun and different and interesting. And something that I learned from it. That's what it is. That's what I boil it down to. It's like, there's something that I can take out that I, probably like, it ends up like bleeding into other songs because I start like overusing it. Like I was way overusing o- Oliver drums. Like, <laughs> Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, they, they just sound three, so good three, though. Three, four months ago. And now I'm like, okay, Juan, you need to stop because right. everything <laughs> is Oliver drums. Like, but 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 it's also a thing where it's like kind of like the process of like, I don't know, stumbling stumbling into something that gets me excited. Like, dude, mm. I don't know. Sacrifices to me with Miet is so exciting because it's so simple yet does a lot of damage. And it feels like Troy Sivan meets Daft Punk mm. in Damn. a really okay. And I mean, I hate talking about like myself in that way because it's almost like I'm talking about someone else's music. So I don't want it to seem like, oh, I'm so fucking dope. Like, no, but like it sounds uh, like no, like, but but I'm excited, you know, and yeah, and and I feel like that's that's where I boil it down. If I can be excited about it, the shit that I'm doing and if I can like kind of like. I don't I feel like I, I honestly don't care anymore about what I want it all to come out so i'm gonna find a way for it all to come out i think i'm gonna do an album in december where i just throw everything you know and and there's gonna be one release a month maybe maybe even more you know so i mean i think that's that's as as people who who had to sit on stuff for you know a while just trying to figure figuring out like where it is just to your excitement it's it's cool that you're making stuff that you're excited about. Like I think that we had a hard time figuring out if we even liked the stuff that we were working on. And I remember uh, when we did the Q and A with Lido at Berkeley. Mm-hmm. He said, and I'll, you know, I'll never forget it. He was like, "I love my shit. I bump my shit." Right. And yeah. if you can make something that you feel that way about, you're absolutely in the clear. I think first off, like the whole feeling of like feeling like shit about not being enough can be good and bad good if you can control it so that you can make something out of it and you can like learn from it and find a way to find the way to get better i do think with like what's kind of like 2020 doing to us as artists is like now everyone's an artist 
<laughs> so might as well be really weird and different and have fun with it. Right. And then I think, um, I don't know. I'm just excited, you know, and, and to me, it excites me to hear like when you posted like the Facebook status of like finished our, our EP, I was like, hell yeah, let's go, <laughs> baby. Like I'm, I'm pumped for you guys, you know, and I'm, and I'm pumped for like, like all the homies that are just kind of like doing the thing and cause it's hard and it's, it's not easy to kind of like keep yourself motivated and, and, and find kind of like accept where you are and who you are as an artist and who are, who you are as a producer, like faulting ourselves for not being technically able to make people feel shit. But all in all, I think first of what you guys are doing is awesome I'm like super, oh, thank you so much, man. super excited and uh, like very keen to hear what you guys have been continuing to make. And um, uh, we can send you all the all the demos, please, all the please, all the finished please. stuff, you know. But only if you send us, uh, you know, send us Miet and and you guys in, in return, you know. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll I won't say that whatever you I won't say the I won't say the intros are too long this time. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but if but if uh, you do, then at least uh, we'll listen. You know? Oh my god, uh, so funny! <laughs> well, I felt like an ass. Are you uh, are you ready for the question round? Let's do we the end with a little with, with a little snappy question round. Snappy. First question of the question round: What is your phone background? Right now, it's just a painting. It's a weird painting. Ooh. It's like bl- blotchy, splatchy. Like some abstract expressionist stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I I, I want to change it to Spider Man, but I haven't found the right Spider Man one. Yeah. It, would it be like Spider Verse Spider Man, or would it be like the the Sam Raimi or no 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 Tom Holland vibes? Okay, okay, cool, 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 okay. Cool, cool, cool. Or 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 like maybe just like go full left field and go like Comic Man Spider. Ooh, oh, Man, Man Spider. Spider, that's hardcore. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I love that, and I feel like we we kind of touched on this, but uh, if you have another thing. Uh, Talk about it. Do you have a non-musical hobby? Animation right now. I was thinking yeah, about I... learning Blender. Ooh, that's Ooh. a whole other can but, of worms. But it's, uh, but it's too big of a can of worms. I'm going to stick yeah. to final. Animate a can of worms. <laughs> I'm, I'm like. I'm... Yeah, it'll take you four months to animate one can of worms. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm like Final Cut Pro and and uh, TikTok, TikTok. I guess TikTok is my new, oh, no, yeah. my new hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Um, are there any skills that you would like to have? Man, Wonder. <laughs> de- definitely be less shitty at making stuff. Right. Uh, number one. Hold on. I think this one's important. So I, I don't want to just like throw anything out there. You know what? Being okay asking shit for pe- from mm. people. Hey. That's that's a really that's a huge skill. I think I think I need to get that better. Uh, that's that's uh, that's served. I think that's been been my uh, you know saving skill in all of this. It's huge. I mean, people people see you very differently than how you see yourself. So, Definitely. so it's it's chill to reach out, and it's chill to 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 wanna wanna grow it out that way too. You know, I I, I get scared because I'm like I'm not enough to to re- I was like I'm not enough to hit you guys up to fucking do the podcast you know so no I, I listen i felt the same way i was just like oh shit like are you, are you like any and even just like to, to hang or write or whatever i'm just yeah. like oh he's got he's got better things to do oh my than, god than work and i uh... i feel that way about my life all the time dude so i feel like that's something that i need to work on and i'm trying to work on it you know yeah no that's huge hey we, we, we can even start here i look forward to you know in quarantine or post quarantine, doing some stuff, man. I'm so down. Let's do it. <laughs> the crucial question of the podcast, the biggest, most Oof, important question: Would you be a pirate? Uh, yar. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. That's say no more. You've 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 answered the question adequately. Yeah, oh, I, I can't say um, more than that. <laughs> uh, do you have uh, Do you have any tattoos? If so, what's your first? I don't, but I want one. What's the, what tattoo do you want? So, um, like I have. Uh, fresh new scars from my whole situation. Oh yeah. Um. So I probably wanna, I wanna do a bird here, maybe a sparrow hmm. here. Oh, that's really sweet. Cause it kind of, I I wanna just be reminded of of like my own existence, <laughs> and that <laughs> and that I can renounce to being myself. You know. Mm. And I feel like there's something so innocent and so like a bird is a bird. 
That's so dumb. That sounds so dumb. A bird is no, a that's, bird. That's, wow. Listen, I, 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 I'm literally working on a solo record right now called Music for Birds, and like that's kind of the vibe of it. Like, oh it's like, my lord, I love like every, it. Every song is every song is based on a bird, and it's 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 for a very similar reason. Like yeah, like I, it was because I was sitting on my balcony just looking at birds, and I'm like, birds are fucking chill as fuck. I want to make music for them. Boom. Yo, so I, I need I to hear that, that too, 100%. by the way. Please, it's so it. good. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm allowed to be a fan because like, I'm just like in the other room. Yo, um, but I like, need to hear this because I'll, I'll shoot you the Dropbox link. It is super hella good. brilliant. Both of y'all are hella brilliant. Like mad respect. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Uh, what was the first concert you went to? Paul Gilbert when I was 11 Ooh. years old. Whoa. You really are a guitar player. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I met him. Wow! Like I was eleven. The 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 age thing was like it was supposed to be twelve, but my dad smuggled me in. <laughs> he had me lie, and like we went in, and I think it was Marco Miniman playing drums, and they were oh, like yeah, doing yeah, yeah, like yeah. the whole Spaceship One tour where he did like this like Japanese album where he's like singing like kind of like. I revisited that album again because it's kind of killing. The writing is kind of whack, but I just love him so much that and he's a he's a great player. Well, and I didn't know about music like that before. You know, I yeah. was like just listening to I was like learning YouTube songs. You know, right? Which amazing, but I was on 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 the audience, and like a photographer came up to me and he was like, "Hey, do you want to meet him?" Uh, and my dad was like, "Hey, are you gonna like?" take him out back or something i was like oh, he's a kid um but then he was like come and then i saw the whole show from from the side of the stage and then went down and met him and we talked about ace freely from kiss <laughs> and he gave me a pic and uh and he autographed my my he was oh, huge super nice dude amazing changed that, my life that's- that's a that, that's awesome. Um, you know, like and, and also very specifically, kind of a guitar, guitar. You know, such world. a guitar nerd, bro. Like, Ingve, oh, I I used to eat Ingve Malmsteen for breakfast. Like, oh yeah, big big vibe. Hell yeah. Other other than the uh, your most recent scar, um, mm. do you have a scar with a story? Uh, well, I was born with a like a genetic disease on my foot. Whoa. So I it's. Like it was, I, I'm missing several muscles in my right leg and wow. like they're like one centi- like three centimeters different. And when I was little, like when I was about one year old, I have like a, a scar from like the side of my foot that goes all the way up here and then one all over. Cause like my, I had club foot. So oh, wow. like, and back then, like now you can you can get away with not doing surgery because you can do therapy for it, but you had to do surgery back then because it was like completely like this. So um, I had a cast when I was one year old and my <laughs> mom my mom s- said that she could hear me like going over there because I would like go <laughs> because of the cast. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, that's another one. Wow, that's, that's quite the story. Cl- Clubfoot uh, is not a bad uh, album name. <laughs> you know, Clubfoot. That's pretty good. I don't be surprised if the if the one in <laughs> you, December. You do have a lot of music. You have to have to put put in containers. Yeah. What are, What are three thoughts you have at this moment? I'm hungry. Damn, that was a lot of coffee. <laughs> and why? Just, oh, yeah. just, oh, wow! That's why? Great. <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> that's that's a big one. That is that is often a thought that I'm having. Yep. What would you say is important to you? How people think about me, which is mm. not a good thing. Mm. But I, I also, I, I guess I've been kind of getting out of that. So I think more important is like being kind to myself. I think that's important mm. to me, you know, because I'm not very kind to myself. I, f- I feel like shit about myself most of the time. So I'm trying to, I feel like that's what's important. Like, I feel like the important things that take over my life right now are what I need to work on to kind of like become a 
try to become a better human. I'll tell you, it's almost a, a relief that somebody who is as good and talented as you are feels shitty because like, then I'm like, oh, cool. Then we all can, we can all, uh, you know, go easier, you know, on, on Man, ourselves. Man, that's crazy. You know? I mean. Because that's the thing is, you, you like, you are, you're like, like a, you know, a kind of benchmark, like for, for quality and whatnot. Like Dang. if you're feeling Dang. crap when you wake up, then everybody, you know, is allowed to feel like crap when Man, you wake up. I you appreciate know? that. I mean. I've I've talked a, a lot about this with Ian because even after Pretty Please came out, I gave him a call to like thank him for letting me a part of it and to also say that I don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, shut shut up, like just shut up. But like, I get you, but shut up. But <laughs> but, but if there's anything I gleaned from the conversation we had at, at BMI, he he feels that way about himself sometimes 100%. too, right? 100%. I mean, and, and every time I... I talk to him and I go like, like, what's up? I'm like, ah, well, same old, like feeling like shit about what I'm doing. He's like, he, he, she usually says this, which kind of like hits pretty hard. And he's like, well, that's, that's why you're going to win, you know? Mm. Cause I feel like the, the moment that we get complacent and the moment that we start thinking that we're better than what we actually like the, the moment that we start getting a little too done in Krugery then mm. then then shit starts getting bad but i also think that it's a balance you know because mm. that's why i'm talking about like being kinder to myself cuz it's okay like it's it's fine and i feel like i want to work on myself more to accept where i am and who i am and 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 know that like we're all kind of doing this thing and there's so many people doing it so might as well kind of like chill out you know, and, and accept mm. where I am. And, and yeah, I forgot the question, but no, listen, well, uh, thank you it's, for it's, coming it's, to my TED talk. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're, we're ha- happy to be here. Front row, front row ticket. <laughs> yeah. And l- last question is okay. what are you looking forward to? Man, trying to figure out how to put these, <laughs> all these sounds <laughs> out. Uh, part of it is that, uh, I'm looking forward to, seeing 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 how i can like cope on on what's going to be the 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 next exciting thing you know i'm i'm excited about continuing collaborating with with people like like miet and with like cole and with my friend christine noel who's also like a freak of nature actually i have a song coming out with another writer that i recently met that is signed with big deal who is an absolute beast we've never met in real life. We only do Zoom sessions, but the four songs that we've done are like some of my favorite songs. Shout out to Max Duval. She's Ooh. so killing. Absolutely insane. The vocals are recorded on iPhone. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Which I'm so pumped about. Same as, like, I think half of the releases are going to be recorded on iPhone because that's what's been like quarantine vibes right like all these songs that are coming out are ca- kind of coming out like that sorry i had to do the plug because i know I, I'll, I'll, I'll put the i'll put the song i'll put the song in right here Also, I like with all the shit and the different shit that I put out, I have a playlist. I have two playlists that I have under like my artist thing on Spotify, Ariza. There's one that is like Ariza and then the like Ariza backwards. That's the playlist where like you can find all the shit that I've worked on, like including the Dua stuff, including the, the Julia stuff. And but also like all the adjacent projects that I do mm. uh, or the stuff that I've played on as a session player. And then there's the other one that is called Ariza Selects, which is kind of like the stuff that I've been listening to, which can be like anything from like vegetarian death metal to <laughs> trip hop, uh, Foley music for narwhals, like whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, as one does, as one. Of um, course. That's, I mean, that's, that's so awesome, man. And I, uh, I just got to say thank you for discovering us, oh, you know, shit. back yeah. at school. You know, thank you for, for being honest with us and putting up with our young uh, arrogance. You same know? And, though. Same, 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 same. <laughs> You're fine. Like, and, and we all, dude, like, we all you, figure it out, you know. It never came across as that, by the way. Like, I was, 
I I was like super I was super inspired how like you guys were 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 so like had a vision, you know, that inspired me, you know. Well, it's because we were terrified. You know, mm-hmm. we were like we were we were we dealt with not knowing what we were doing by mm-hmm. like really doubling down. Yeah. We doubled down on the sort of feeling of insecurity by being like, we are artists, so it doesn't matter if we're insecure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. Um but but no, really like you it's been so cool to sort of watch your journey in parallel, you know, with with our friends and and all of this incredible music that you've been making, and I hope that this is uh, the first of many intersections. Like I look Absolutely. forward to, to so working down. on whether it's an animation you need some sound design for, yeah, or you know, go. new new songs we can sort of we can jam on. Amazing. Um, yeah. Even before a day one, you're a day day zero, and yeah. and uh, we we really appreciate everything you're doing, man. Happy to hear that, and and super honored to be here, and love talking about this shit with creatives, and and hopefully like let's keep the conversation going too. You know, like you guys are super brilliant, and I think I think we gotta look out for each other. You know, especially yeah, definitely. in times like these. Sometimes you need like two way therapy sessions where you can yeah. <laughs> like big vibe. Just like send shit and be like, am I garbage? And then just kind of be like, <laughs> well, this could be better, but you're not garbage. So, Aww. well, hey, man, I, I, I look forward to uh, to all of it. And, and thank you so much for, for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. I'm super honored and super exciting. I always get myself in trouble when I fall in love. Oh, I get so damn uneasy when I think of us. I understand if you're. We would like to thank Alan C. for supporting Talking Lion on Patreon and Isotope.